Hi, it's Dan Willinger from Ventriloquist Central. And today I have a very special Frank Marshall figure that I'd like to share with you. You know, Frank in his 1931 catalog offered copies of, his, of Frank Byron Jr. And uh, that never had a price in it. I guess before he could sell it, he had to have permission to build it. And then when he got the permission, he would give the price. But anyways, he did make a few of them, and a couple of them are at the Vent Haven Museum, and I also have a copy, and today I'd like to show that to you. This is a uh, Frank Byron copy made by Frank Marshall, and uh, he's a pretty loaded figure. He has a lot of movements. He's got the mouth movement, and he's got raising eyebrows. He has a flip-up wig. He has a whistling effect. And uh, he also has, uh, I think it's wiggling ears, right? I don't mind. Oh. oh, there it is. Yeah, wiggling ears. When I got this figure, uh, the wiggling ears, the cord actually was trapped. And I, it's all original. And, uh, you know, I just did not want to break this head open. But uh, Lee Dunn, good friend of mine, a figure builder, happened to come to spend Thanksgiving with me. And uh, if you look at some of the pictures on the website, you'll see Lee actually went inside the head through his mouth <laughs> and uh, actually got that spring unjammed from the uh, controls and got the uh, ears moving again. The other thing that's unusual is that the Frank Byron figures had rather large hands. And uh, I do have a couple of figures in the collection that have these large hands, but if you look at the catalog, the 31 Calic, you'll see that these were the hands that were pictured with the Frank Byron Jr. figure. So, so there you have it. He's all original, original body, original hands. Um, the other thing that I found that was very amazing is this figure was originally owned by Joe Lopez. Uh, he was from New York at the time, and he was a very big lover of uh, Frank Byron, and has always wanted one, and he happened to have owned this figure, and he sold it, and it was gone for 30 years until it actually ended up with Ventriloquist Central, and then Joe contacted me to let me know that uh, he, in fact, owned it. You can see the whole story if you read about it on the um, tribute page of the uh, collection of Frank Marshall figures. Scroll down and take a look at this one and read all about it. And there's pictures of uh, the previous owner with the daughter holding the figure. Joe supplied those pictures to me. But anyways, a great figure, a very rare figure, and I'm happy to show them to you. Talk to you soon. Always remember, I'm looking for ventriloquist figures for the Ventriloquist Central Collection, so let me know what you've got. Talk to you soon. <laughs>